Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the incredible KTM 890 SMT. Now I've got this bike for two weeks. I'm a week into my loan. I've already done the first ride on this machine, which I'll stick at the top there. In this video, I'm going to be taking this on a bit of a jaunt. I'm going to be heading down to CERN Abbas to see the Abbas Giant. So it's about, uh, I'm going to say 200 mile round trip, something like that should take me a good three or four, five hours. So we get to sort of understand what the bike's like on a slightly longer ride, what sort of fuel consumption we're gonna get, what the comfort's gonna be like, and what it's gonna be like on different sorts of roads we may find on the way. So if you're interested in the new KTM SMT, and to be honest, why wouldn't you be? It's fantastic. Then settle down, relax, get yourself a nice cup of tea, and Chopsy, roll the intro. Well, last time I went out, I destroyed my glasses, as you probably saw. So I'm on my backup set of glasses. I'm on my backup camera. I'm down to one Insta360 now, which is un, un, you know, one which is completely undamaged. We will do a full walk around of this machine as part of this video, but not at the moment. Let's get cracking. We've got a full tank of fuel. I've reset the trip, so we'll see how much fuel we get, how much range we get out of this tank. I think it's a uh, 15 litre tank could be 16 litre could be 16 litre tank so it's not huge you know as i say it's not got the full ball bags it's half ball bags on this so the, the, you know, the fuel doesn't go all the way down the bottom it stays a little bit higher in the bike but anyway let's set the sat nav up i've never been to see the sand giant before i've heard he's got a massive cock let's go and have a look Oh, can't do that. We'll mess up the fuel economy. Oh, it's when you're on the when you're on the dirt on this, it actually feels really capable on the rough stuff. <laughs> of course, because it's the 890 Adventure. So I think, you know, this may be the SMT, but I think actually you could do gravel lanes on this. You could do a lot of the sort of adventure riding that people would do on the 890 Adventure bike. You know, I think you could do a lot of that sort of gravel lane stuff on this anyway. So, so far, I've been really, really enjoying this motorcycle. It's, uh, I think it's the perfect blend of comfort and performance. I mean, I've never ridden a more comfortable road bike than this. I know it's the 890, it's a middleweight, you know, it's not, it's not one of the big boys, but it's big enough to be a decent size for a big boat like me. It's still, bloody fast and you're in like a perfect comfortable riding position you know what I've I, in the past I've criticized and said oh you know if you why are people buying adventure bikes they're not going to take them off road they should be buying sports touring machines well I sort of get it I get it the ergos on adventure bikes are fantastic aren't they really really comfortable more so than a lot of sports tourers so I get why people are buying these GSs and everything, even though they've got no intention of going off-road, because the ergos are good. Now this bike has got brilliant, comfortable ergos, but because it's got 17-inch wheels, it just handles so much better than any of the 19-inch wheel shod machine. I don't think it's until you ride this bike or a bike like it I know you've got the Tracer and those sorts of bikes which I guess have got a sort of similar to this aren't they but again they're not they're not adventure bikes they're just oh here comes, here comes the rain they're just sort of comfortable sort of road bike I guess it's a similar but I've never ridden the Tracer actually I have to confess I've never ridden the Tracer I guess the F900 BMW you could say is similar Again, I'm not, I've not ridden that either. But there is a lot to be said for that sort of comfortable, upright ergos that adventure bikes offer. And I've just found the blend of that adventure bike position with super sticky 17-inch rubber and suspension, which is dedicated for this bike. You know, this isn't the 890 Adventure suspension. These forks are on no other bike, you know. This is just dedicated for this machine and designed for this machine and it's just the perfect blend of comfort performance the overall package is incredibly impressive so much so 
that I've sort of actually been considering buying one of these. That, that's how good I think it is. Anyway, am I babbling? And I'm getting wet, I know that. The engine on this bike is, of course, the 890 parallel twin motor, you know, 270 degree crank. Exactly the same engine which is in the Adventure version. It's not the same engine which is in the, the Duke R. The 890 Duke R has a slightly different engine, different cams, different compression. You know, and that bike makes 120 horsepower. This makes 100 horsepower. But I think the tune on this one, it, you get a slightly more torque and it's probably got a, a bit more drive at the bottom, which you could argue, you know, would actually make a better road bike rather than chasing the, the 120 peak power figures. But I can't help wishing that they'd put the, the 120 horsepower engine in this bike. But to be honest, if that didn't exist, I'd be completely happy with the performance that this bike offers. Oh, stop raining. Stop raining right now. I guess this is a good excuse to talk about a bit of weather protection. Because this has got such a tiny little screen, you don't get any sort of wind protection on your helmet. I'm six foot two, so of course, my size, I'm, I'm getting not a lot from that screen. I'm getting a bit of sort of protection around my belly area, sort of halfway up my chest about here is where I can feel the full force of the wind and my helmet is completely in the air. But what that does mean is you've got clean air on your helmet. So, you know, I, I, can, I sometimes prefer that to a, a screen where it causes a lot of buffeting and a lot of vibration on your helmet. So I actually quite like a low screen like that, if I'm completely honest. The brakes on this bike are the Jean, Jean 1 brakes or the, the Spanish brand. So they're not Brembo's, they're not Stylemas, you know, they certainly don't look sexy. <laughs> but actually, in reality, they work very well. You don't, you don't get that masses of bite and sharp performance that you do, you know, on the 890R with the Stylemas and the MCS Master Cylinder, because you've just got a regular Master Cylinder as well. But, you know, they, they actually perform very well. There's a lot of bite, there's a lot of power. They're perfectly adequate, you know, probably more, I've been a bit unjust to them, they're actually more than adequate, they're, they feel very good, but they just lack, you know, lack, lack the looks really. I would like a little bit more bite there, if I want to have it perfect, but they're, they're, they're pretty decent. When you ride in this bike, what I love about the handling is there's just oodles of confidence. And not only is there oodles of confidence, you can actually ride it sort of and brake and then go into corners all on the front brake, which is which is incredible for an adventure bike. And this is why you sort of realise it's not an adventure bike. Because normally when you're going fast on an adventure bike, you know, to stabilise the bike, I sort of would use the rear brake first and then maybe go for a little bit of front. But on this one, it's that sporty that you can sort of brake around on the front. And it hasn't got masses of sort of fork dive you know it, 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 you can actually use the front brake as if it's like a very sporty sort of sports bike sports naked which is great you know so you, you really do get the feeling that you're riding something really sporty here and, and actually sort of when you're braking in the corner trail braking it doesn't even try and stand up too much I mean the 890 Duke car you know is an incredible handling bike and you feel like you've got a bit of that DNA in this machine. You know, I think it's the same swinging arm. It could even be the same frame, to be honest. But you've definitely got that feeling of that same level of performance, or almost, you know, from the handling on this. It's really impressive. I'm, I'm having to take it easy because of the rain. It's sort of put me right off, chucking it everywhere. But yeah, it's, it's a beautifully set up handling like this. I've done the whole video by the time we get to bloody Winchester at this rate. Okay, I'm going to turn you off for now. Hopefully we can get through a little bit of this weather and I'll turn you back on in half hour. So see how we're getting on. See you in a minute. We are just now coming into Stockbridge. So we've been going about half hour now, I suppose, just country roads. What I'm doing, I'm, I'm taking the country route so we're not going on motorways and stuff or, or trying to avoid motorways as much as possible. A little sit rep, we've done 34 miles so far. So we're 34 miles in, 
The range is predicting 150 miles still in the tank. Mm, I'll, be I'll be surprised if we get that. But, you know, so far perfect comfort, really enjoying it. What I haven't really told you is where we're going, isn't it? I mentioned we're going to see the CERN Giant. Now, the CERN Giant is is basically one of the... It's in Dorset, so we're going back to Dorset again. It seems we always go to Dorset on one of these uh, videos of mine, don't we? The CERN Giant is a chalk picture in the hillside, you know, whereby they put chalk and make an outline of a, of a picture on the hillside. It's, they, they're guessing it's from around 700, between 700 and 1100 AD. So it's pretty old, but there's no written record of it before like 1650 or something. So it's sort of one of those things whereby no one really knows when it was made. No one really knows much about it. Some say it's sort of Hercules, supposedly. But one thing everyone knows about it, <laughs> and when you see it, you'll know this thing. It's got a huge, great <laughs> bollocks. <laughs> And supposedly it's some sort of fertility god, some people say. So apparently if you make love to your woman on the end of the <laughs> then you're guaranteed to have a baby. So I'm not sure we'll be doing that today. We've not got Mrs Chumps with me. I've not been before, we'll see what it's like. I thought we'd make an interesting little trip. Have a look at a huge <laughs> Yeah, I know the level of my audience. <laughs> So just coming into Winchester, I thought I'd stop for a, a sneaky coffee and a pastry. And while I'm here, I'll give you a very quick run through of the bike. Let's have a closer look at it. WP suspension, the Apex, I think this is a 43 millimeter. And like I say, this suspension isn't on any other models. It's just on this bike. There is that parallel twin motor. I do love the finish. The engine finishes on the KTMs where they sort of paint it. I don't know if it's a powder coat or a Cerakote, but I really do like the engine finishes where they're all painted and not just like bare aluminium. Got a lot of time for that. Rear swinging arm is also very nice, sort of painted black. You do get quite a lot of stones and stuff getting stuck in this area here though. Bit of a, a gravel trap almost there. But again, you know, everything's decent, even painted. Um, sort of rear brackets for the caliper there as well. Rear foot pegs also even have a little bit of rubber for the pillion. That's unusual, I've not seen that before. Remote preload adjuster on the rear shock. So fully, fully adjustable, the suspension there. Ooh, pan au chocolat, I'll have you in a minute. The seat is actually very comfortable. It's almost like a memory foam sort of seat and it's very grippy with this material. <laughs> I really, really like the seat on the bike. This one also has a rear rack. I don't know if that's standard, the rack, or whether that's an extra. I've seen some without it, so I, I don't know. That could be an extra, that rack. I actually think it's a, a really good looking bike, especially with the orange wheels. I know they're, they're probably a bit of a pain to keep clean, the orange wheels, but yeah, I'd love them. I'd definitely want the orange wheels. Right, that'll do. I'll scoff my pastry. Let's get going. Mm. See you in a minute. Just coming into Salisbury now. Lovely little coffee, lovely little refreshment there. A couple of guys all pulled in on their uh, MT10s and Super Dukes and stuff and uh, have a little chat with those fellas. Yeah, lovely. Really nice, that little uh, cafe there. Can't think what it's called. I know it's changed recently. They actually do a very good breakfast. I've had a nice breakfast in there before. I was quite tempted. I could have done with a bit of sausage. Hey! -hey. Sit rep wise, we've now done 47 miles, so... <laughs> Not exactly mega mileage into this trip already. 160 miles range, it's still insisting I've got 160 miles left in the range. I don't believe it. I don't believe we've got that much. We will see. I think it's been a little bit optimistic, the fuel range on this bike, but let's, let's give her the benefit of the doubt for now. We're probably a good hour, hour and 15 minutes in. I know I did get off back there and, and just rested, you know, had a little rest and a wee and a coffee. But I mean, my ass is an absolute comfort. I do suffer with sore bodies on a lot of bikes. You know, it, it, the bike has to be a little bit special to be able to stop my bum from hurting after a few hours in the saddle. So I think this one's going to be good. And my only niggles really is, is this tr <laughs> the wheelie control, or the, tr the wheelie control is not separated from the traction, but you know, that's to be expected at this price range. 
also you know the, the traction comes back on again when you turn the bike on and off yeah it's a small gripe 99 percent of people i won't be bothered by that um you know there's no there's no complaints with vibration i mean it's incredibly smooth this parallel twin motor i mean i've said it before i'll say it again this parallel twin motor is the best parallel to motor i've ever tried it's so smooth you know there's no vibrations <laughs> it delivers brilliant punch and power and torque you know I, i'd be i'm completely normally i think parallel twins are just a bit of a cop out and an easy cheap way to make a you know a budget motorcycle but the parallel twin this ktm parallel twin is fantastic it is fantastic and i think i'd rather have this than a full v twin i think it's that good I honestly think it's that good. So there's no gripes with this motor. What I'll do, I'll turn you back on again when we hit Dorset, because this next stretch of road is quite fast, and it's pointless trying to talk, because it'll be too noisy. So I'll turn you back on after the fast bit. I'll speak to you in a minute. So we've got 34 minutes to go, 20 miles. Let's just have a look where we're going to be. Do, 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 do. Okay, heading up that way. That spin it round so it, you can recognise where we are. Okay, I don't know what this road's going to be like. I've not been this way before. I don't think. I don't think I've been on this road before. I know up here somewhere is that dodgy junction where I nearly crashed the Multistrada. That's around up here somewhere. Have to watch out for that one. No fatigue whatsoever. Completely as fresh as a daisy. My old glasses on. I hate these glasses. My buddy Frank Butcher and he's Pats! Pats! Demo ends at 932 miles. So another 100 miles and the demo mode is going to expire. <laughs> That's what it does. That's how it tells you. Now, I think that was the way I nearly crashed the multi. So I don't think I've ever been this way. What I like about this bike, and normally adventure bikes, you know, with their 19s or their 21 inch front wheels, you lose the connection with the road. You can still chuck them around, but you lose the feel from the tarmac. It just sort of wafts over everything. With this, I've got that connection with the tarmac, and I think that's why you can push on with it a bit more, because you're getting that feedback. I can feel the texture of the road beneath me, and I've never had that on a you know an adventure motorcycle and i think that's what gives you that extra bit of confidence and it would do if it's had a 21 on it oh morning or even a 19 hang on where have i got to go straight over this way so yeah that's yeah that's a really nice sort of benefit of dropping to a 17 inch front wheel collision hotspot this must be a decent bit of road then <laughs> get past the caravan lovely part of the world Dorset there's so much to see in Dorset this is why I end up on all of my sort of tests I do where I go somewhere with a destination like this it's always Dorset because there's just so many sights to see oh the juice speed now twisties oh we got traffic and cyclists just on the good bit. 18 minutes to go. We've done 84 miles. The bike says we've got 100 miles range still. So that's looking pretty decent, isn't it? This looks like the perfect bit of road for this bike. If it was a little bit drier. <laughs> Smelly. I smell poo poo. Uh, right here. Dorchester, Piddle Hinton, Piddle Trent Hyde. <laughs> Come up with these names. I think we're getting close now. 12 minutes, 5.6 miles. Woo! <laughs> Piddle Hinton. Twinned with somewhere in Normandy, it said. And I bet if you go to that place in Norman Normandy, it doesn't say twinned with Piddle Hinton. I can guarantee it thatch roofs how do these people get on with thatch roofs you've got to replace them like every 20 years the whole roof haven't you and it's like 30 40 000 pound to re-thatch a roof you'd, you know you'd have to have your roof thatched and then you just start saving straight away for having it replaced again 
the Thimble Inn. Must be talking about their shop motor measures. This is a great little run. These roads are brilliant leading in here, aren't they? Don't know where this is. Morning. Okay, a lovely little Dorset town. Sir Nabbas this way, two and a half miles. It's going to appear on the horizon in a minute. The 180 foot giant with a huge. Well, Sir Nabbas is the town, of course. I'm assuming the Cern man is close by. Giant viewpoint left. So we want the giant viewpoint. And this is Sir Nabbas. I'm sure, I think the Abbey is, there's some historic significance around the Abbey here as well. Hello, the Giant Inn. Look at this, this is gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Oh, is this it? Everyone's looking in that direction. Oh, is that? <laughs> is this not that good? Hang on. There it is up there, look. You see that? Let's get the gear off, get my decent camera out. Let's see what we can do. There it is behind me on the hillside up there. Can you see it? Can you see it up there somewhere? So what I'll do, I do, I, I didn't bring my drone because it's almost a waste of time having a drone at the moment because you're not allowed to use them anywhere. Certainly not at national trust sites, which is what this is. So I've got some stock footage. I'll chuck it on the screen. Have a look at this. Sixty meters high, thirty-one meters wide. No one knows why it was carved. Four hundred years ago, or a thousand years ago, or somewhere in between. So there you go. There's, there's not too much known about it. Obviously, a fertility symbol with that huge. <coughs> the bike has been fantastic. Absolutely loved my little trip down here on this machine. <laughs> Seems a bit of dirt on it now. That's from all the crappy roads I've been on. But what a bike this is. Thoroughly impressed with this machine, I have to say. Yeah, I was really excited about the SMT and um, it's lived up to everything I thought. I actually love the look of it. A lot of people say, oh, the mudguard looks weird. I think it just looks brilliant. I like everything about it, if I'm completely honest. I think KTM have really sort of knocked it out the park with this one. So there we go, the CERN Giant. Now, I'm going to ride this home. We've got 90 miles fuel range left, 93 miles we've done to get here. So we're definitely going to need to refuel on the way home. So we'll see how many miles we get out of it. Also, the demo mode's going to end in 100 miles. So hopefully that may be part of this ride as well. It may not quite be. But I want to see what happens when the demo mode runs out. You know, do you just lose the quick shift to mid-ride or is it when you turn the bike on and off again, everything, everything disappears? So uh, that'd be quite interesting. So let's see if we can hit the 100 miles, see what happens when the demo mode goes. That's going to be annoying though, because I'm going on track with this and I want the quick shifter for the track, really. Oh, annoying. Fuel time, almost home now. I've done 100 and... Hang on, let me... <laughs> It's quite small, the text on the display there. I've done 108, no, 166 miles. I've got 40 miles left, so it says. It's flashing red, though, which if I had 40 miles left, I don't think it would be flashing red like that, should it? 166.2 miles, 30 miles left now. And, uh, yeah, so I think it's easily got 180, 190-ish miles in the tank, I'd say. Pretty reasonable. 
There we go, demo mode has clicked over, so it says demo ends after next ignition cycle. So when you turn it on and off again, all the quick shift and everything will be gone. So uh, yes, that's how it works. So I thought it would be that, and there we go. Proofs in the pudding, demo mode's finished.